Okay, this is what we want to show. Here is Simplicity One Major with its ornamentation. This is phrases three. This is Simplicity One Minor, which we've just finished in today's stream, reflected in place. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change Part 32 Building. In today's episode, we re-entered by reflecting re relaxation is a function of familiarity. We shared Simplicity One Major at Open Mic and people really enjoyed it and said they found it very relaxing, especially the, uh, the part we just played for you, which has the cascading chords. They really like how this sounds. And we agree, we like it too. Uh, among other things, it has a lot of subdominant intervals and so forth. In fact, we spent a lot of time today annotating every, every, every interval and every trichord along the way. Um, now, in studying Simplicity One, major in detail by annotating all these chords, we are quietly, constructively building our skills with a Z, half humorously, but seriously. Uh, and in, in listening for why it sounds cool, why does it sound relaxing, we think that's because it's familiar, but why do certain sequences sound so cool in a row? And, and by kind of looking at when we're in subdominant, tonic, uh, or even in dominant, or even ambivalent, uh, we, by analyzing it in detail, we were finding all kinds of unusual chords we, we hadn't realized were in there, like a G22 and a D23 and even an E1. And then we indeed found some passing, flying ambivalent chords on the way, even though this is a very traditional, you know, major, minor, pleasant scale piece. Um, and, and <clears throat> another thing we realized that we're overlaying scale cascades on top of each other which generates those chords <clears throat> but whenever you start a chord on a on a new note for example if you go uh, that's pretty hard to hear the, the idea of modes is you know it's going to be easier if we just do this somewhere where is it here that's very traditional but if you start on a different note It's not the same. And we started on uh, different notes. Like here we actually started going down from the D. Etc. Etc. Anyway, we realized that. So, in experimenting with uh, Simplicity One Major, we're building our skills. Now, the main thing we spent today on was getting Simplicity One Major fully annotated. It was already playing correctly, and we had added what we call ornamentation and ornamentation two. But for the minor version, which is reflected in place, we hadn't got there yet. So, the second thing we did today was was add ornamentation and ornamentation two, which are perfectly reflected. So what we're going to do for you is play the entire Simplicity One minor, and that will bring us home.
so that concludes today's stream. What we like about this is we've got the minor version with all the ornamentation fully reflected and we're starting to hear things. For example, we raised all of this up an octave from where it was originally um, just because to experiment. And uh, it also surprises us how consonant and pleasant Like right there, that sounds almost as if it was a major scale, yet we know, look at all the B flat, E flat, A flats, those are most definitely uh, the, the minor scale. Um, so composing in the minor mode does not mean that everything sounds sad or like a funeral. Composing in the minor mode just gives it a different power, a different flavor, a different timbre, which we've known for ages. and. And that's why we love experimenting with it so much. But in this case, we took something so traditional, so almost stereotypically, um, you know, cloyingly sweet, um, and still got something in return. The other thing that's interesting, and we noted it in our log, is that sometimes in working with minor, you want to raise things in octave, but sometimes you also want to reverse direction. We should actually add that. Now, now we've done that in a, another composition that you may or, may or not may or may may or may not have been around. So anyway, our ideas for next time are to, in fact, keep experimenting with the minor, double check our reflections, look at uh, annotating the chords. Uh, we did a very detailed annotation of the major. The functions are all the same. The cadences are all the same. Where it's a driftance in major, it's a driftance in minor. That's not the point. It, but these chords here, these chord names will change to, to uh, when we, I mean, we annotated every individual eighth note chord, like that chord there, that would be a, a G3, what is that, a G1, 2. See, that should really be showing as a G1, 2. And we would show that, we would say, uh, Hey, guess what? That's a G12, and you're using the neutral, and you're using a none, and you're using an urge. So that's going to be a G, that can be C minor dominant. And that's just annotating the first eighth rest. So we need to do something similar for all these others here. So that's down the road. That's down the road. The other thing for ideas are to uh, remember we have a whole second scale called Simplicity 2 where we changed the, uh, the shared notes, shared none notes. Shout outs to Sherpa9 who stopped by and Miss Cleo who kept us inspired. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care, do come back, and do keep on streaming.